out there, particularly picking up tomorrow. Lainey, you've been tweeting about it all day. I've been following your messaging, and it's really that we need to prepare. Absolutely. We are going to prepare for the worst because we have the potential to have damaging winds and tornadoes across our area. It is no guarantee. Thankfully, we would rather not have it at all. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that out there today. Of course, we had the gray skies and actually today's weather may help benefit us for tomorrow. I talked about this a little bit at the top of the uh, newscast here. Temperatures. We are watching the temperatures very closely. Now the temps right now are in the mid 50s across the area and if you recall we had forecast temperatures to get into the mid 60s today. So clouds and a stubborn front that hasn't quite made it north far enough have kept us a little cooler today. Now we have gotten some of the warmth in the mountains and of course that higher elevation in and of itself helps with our mountain communities and they're close to 60 in a few areas. We have had kind of a cool easterly wind. It hasn't been blowing a whole lot, but that has helped to keep kind of that cool wedge of air that we've learned a lot about this year sort of pushed up against the mountains and the warmest air has stayed farther to the south. We have clouds. We have at least little spits and sprinkles of rain that are starting to push into our area right now, but the heaviest rain will hold off until tonight and tomorrow, and I do think it will come in waves. I want you to focus on this heavy, steady rain here and then notice how different it looks just south of that warm front. It's more spread out. There's actually a little sun, but where those storms are popping up, they are very intense. So we're going to watch where this boundary moves tomorrow. How far north does it get and which side of it are we on? So that's going to be key. You're going to want to touch back with me tonight. You're going to want to tune in tomorrow to Brian Slocum, Jacqueline Shearer, as well as Michelle Kennedy to let you know what is going on across the area. All of that bright yellow you see there is a tornado tornado watch zone. I will tell you in all my years of forecasting, whenever I see purple or red, you can almost guarantee a severe weather outbreak in that general area. So as that area pushes to the east, we're concerned about a severe weather outbreak, especially I-95 and points south and east, but possibly even developing as far inland as our region. So we're going to watch that very closely. The hash marks here in black show a significant chance for tornadoes. And you notice that the triad is in that zone, but it is predominantly to the southeast. The most significant chance for wind is just to our south and east too, but we are in that zone where we could have damaging winds and isolated tornadoes. So that moderate risk, that threat level of four, we'll call it, is including Alamance, Randolph, Davidson, parts of Guilford County at a level three across the triad, and then still the possibility of isolated severe storms in our mountains and foothills. The biggest threats we think are going to be damaging wind and the potential for tornadoes. So if you look at this closer view here, the probability is running at about 10 to 15 percent. That's actually pretty high for this graphic. I don't often see it quite that high, so it does get my interest for sure from the Storm Prediction Center and damaging wind chances are fairly high across our area too. So of course we want you to know what to do. We talked about this yesterday. If you're at home, a lot of folks working from home, interior rooms, lowest floor. If you can get in a basement, get into a basement. Make sure that you're protecting your head uh, with your hands or with cushions. We have these alert days to make you aware of when we think a life and property could be threatened. And I do think at least in the triad, that's a possibility tomorrow. You watch the rain kind of moving through and then you're going to see some steady rain in the morning and midday. And then you're going to notice in the afternoon, it's going to kind of thin out. But then we're going to look for these cells to pop up that could be pretty intense across the area. So the time frame is probably noon until about 5 or 6 p.m. Temperatures will get in the upper 60s, I suspect, in parts of the Piedmont Triad. It will be windy, and those rain chances are perhaps higher early in the day, but the storm chances are higher later in the day, with temperatures in the mid-60s in the foothills, and even temperatures that will likely get in the low 60s in our mountain towns. Let's look at our seven-day forecast, and you'll see a big drop in temperatures heading into the first weekend of spring. I still have those temperatures down to freezing, if not below, Saturday and Sunday morning.